Hey, welcome back everybody. So we want to give a proof of the law of sines and a proof of the law of cosines. So we're going to start out with the law of sines. And so suppose we have some triangle ABC where capital A, B, and C are the angles and lowercase a, b, and c are the sides. This is the result that we want to establish. And the key to this proof is to look at the trig formula for the area of a triangle. And so so the area, we can define this in three ways. We just need a pair of side angle sides. So we know that the area is equal to 1 half. We could say b times c times the sine of the angle in between. Well, that's also equal to 1 half AC times the sine of the angle in between. And that's also equal to 1 half AB times the sine of the angle in between. And what I could do is I can take this and multiply everything by 2. So that's going to give me the following. So that's going to give me that BC times the sine of A is equal to AC times the sine of b, and that's equal to ab times the sine of c. The next thing I can do is divide everything by a, b, and c. Okay, so dividing this by a, b, c. I'm just going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take this quantity and divide it by ABC, and then lastly, I'm going to take this quantity and divide it by A, B, and C. And of course, we're assuming that none of these values are zero. So we can reduce this, so BC will cancel here and here, and I get sine of A over A is equal to, so this will cancel with this, so sine of B over little b, and these will cancel, and I get sine of c over c. And of course, since none of these values are zero, their reciprocals are also equal. So that establishes the law of sines. And now let's talk about the law of cosines. All right, so we want to establish the law of cosines, which says the following. So given any triangle ABC, the side C squared is equal to the side A squared plus the side B squared minus 2AB cosine of the angle in between. So suppose we have the following situation. So here's some triangle with got three vertices labeled and I want to label the sides now. So if this is angle A or if this is vertex A, then this right here will be a little side A. And then across from B will be side B. And across from C will be side C. So what I want to do now is use the distance formula to measure the length of C. Okay, so now by the distance formula, we have the following. So the length of C is equal to the square root. So let's see here. So we need the difference in the X components here. So this will be B cosine of theta minus a quantity squared plus, well, by the distance formula, I need the difference in the y components here. So that'll be b sine of theta minus 0 quantity squared. Okay, so let's work inside of the square root. Let's do some algebra. So we've got a binomial to expand here. We want to be really careful. So that's going to give us, it looks like b squared 
cosine squared of theta minus 2ab cosine of theta plus a squared. And then here, this is really just b sine of theta squared. So that's going to give me b squared sine squared of theta. Well, I'm going to bring these terms together, and I want to notice that I get a Pythagorean identity. So c is equal to, let's see what we have here. We have b squared, which I can factor out of these two terms, cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta. And then I'm left with, let's see what we have here. So this is minus 2ab cosine of theta plus a squared. So this is a, a classic Pythagorean identity. We know that that's going to give us 1. And then I can just rearrange the terms inside. And so I can write a squared first plus b squared. So that's just the commutative law of addition minus 2ab cosine of theta. And then of course I can square both sides. So if I do that, that establishes our result. So that's really nice. And remember, I can get a similar result from the perspective of, instead of, well, side C, I could write this from the perspective of a 